Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be discussing Node.js and .NET. We're gonna be creating two web APIs in these two different languages, and we're we gonna be comparing them. We're gonna be getting two endpoints, one post and one get, and we're gonna see how easy it is to get started with Node if you actually know .NET. And we're gonna be seeing the different ways where we can actually install packages and basically utilize these two. So let's get started. So what I have here is I have a terminal. On the left hand side is I have where I'm gonna be creating my .NET application. And on the right hand side is where I'm gonna be creating my Node application. So let's start with .NET. In order for us to create, we're gonna be utilizing the .NET CLI, .NET new web API, and I'm gonna call this sample API. And we can see here the project has been created successfully. And on the right hand side, in order for me to get started in creating a Node.js application, what I want to do is uh, first of all, I want to install the packages and the package that I want to install is Express in order for me to utilize Node.js as a web server. And in order for me to do that, I need to utilize NPM. Before we use NPM, I need to make sure Node is installed. So I can put Node dash dash version. And as you can see here, I'm running on the latest version of Node by the time of this recording, which is good. So now I can do NPM install Express. And now once I have done that, we'll basically have installed this package inside this folder in order for me to utilize it. So now what I want to do is I want to open them both in Visual Studio Code. I want to keep them side by side like this. And we're going to see how easy it is to get started with these. So now if we take a look at these two together, basically, on the right hand side I have my node application on the left hand side I have my .NET for my .NET what I have here is basically I have some boilerplate code that Microsoft has provided me on the other hand for my node application is completely empty I would can't see anything here, which is a complete opposite of our .NET application. So what I want to do here is I'm going to remove a lot of the boilerplate code and leave it as simple as possible, just so we can actually have a small starting point comparison. So I'm not going to utilize this. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove these. And I'm just going to say here, hello. And I'm going to return a simple hello world. Hello from .NET. And I'm going to remove this and this. And I'm going to remove this. So we can see here within a very simple lines of course so basically within 10 lines of code with a simple very simple implementation i basically have a full api running with a single endpoint that returns a single sentence hello so let's see how we can do this within node and basically here i did not have to do any coding or i did just initialize the project so now within node what i want to do i'm going to get a new file and i'm going to call this app.js and first of all what i need to do is i need to actually refer to the library that, that i have installed in order for me to utilize as a web server and that library is express so in the dotnet side i'm using the web application of the create builder and basically this refers to the dotnet sdk in order for me to create a web application from the node side i need to rely on that library that I've installed which is express in order for me to have a web application so I'm gonna const express equal require express so now I have done this so what I've done here right now is just initialize this library in order for me to be able to use it as a web application so now once I have my express variable ready I'm just gonna create an app so I'm gonna put const app equal express and basically here as we can see this is very similar to the builder.build where I'm initializing an app Similarly here, Express, here I'm basically creating an instance of a web app and basically delegating it to the app variable. Okay, great. Now what I want to do is I want to actually create an endpoint, which is going to be my hello endpoint. And to and for me to do that, I need to go to app.get. I'm going to put forward slash hello. And then I'm going to have my request and response. And through here, what I want to do is simply I'm going to put return response.json. And I'm going to return hello from node. Once I have done this, the final step that I need to do here is I need to specify the port that this application will run on. So I'm going to put app.listen. And I'm going to specify it to port 3000. And this is it. Let's make this on the single line as well in the same line so we can see here that between these two what i have here is 10 lines of code on the left hand side for dotnet and 10 lines of code for node and basically up till to i think all of them share the same structure where we define our web application we initialize it we define the endpoint and what we want to return and we can see here instead of running it for dotnet uh, for node.js what i'm doing is i'm just initializing the listener so it will run on the left hand side i need to do run and it will automatically assign a port and uh, the other difference here is basically within the return i need to specify that this is going to be the result that i'm going to be returning on the other hand uh, the .NET will basically automatic, uh, automatically handle this for me but other than that we can see it's pretty straightforward so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna open my terminal for both and i'm gonna run them and we can see how they actually run from the .NET side if i want to run it let me go to the folder 
and then I can just put dot .NET run and we can see it's building and now we can see that my application is running on port 5178 so let me copy this and let me go to postman and here within postman as we can see I have my endpoint and I'm gonna put hello and I'm gonna make sure it's a get and I'm gonna say send and now we can see we have hello from .NET and this took almost 100 milliseconds so now what I want to do is I'm going to go back to my editors and I'm going to run my node application. So I'm going to put node app.js and now my node application is running on port 3000. So I'm going to go here. I've already added this. I'm just going to change this from get to post, from post to get. And I'm going to click on send. And as we can see here, I got hello from node. And directly out of the box, we can see that node that my application is running on 21 milliseconds. On the other hand, the .NET application is taking 105 milliseconds. So again, when I send it again, now the request is cached, I'm getting it through 5 milliseconds or 4 milliseconds. My node, similar as well, because it's cached now. So we can see now how these two actually run almost simultaneously with the same, almost the same speed after cache and the only time the initialization because .NET has to do just-in-time compilation other the, in order for it to actually run. So now that we have actually seen how easy it is to go get in the most languages, so I'm going to stop these. I'm going to close the terminals. And what I want to do right now is I want to add a post endpoint. So let's see how we can add it in .NET. So within .NET, if you want to add a post endpoint, it's going to be pretty straightforward. You put app, map post and then here for example what you need to do is you need to specify the endpoint i can also say it's hello and i can define what i want so i can say i'm gonna expect a string of name and then once i do that i can say return hello and name as simple as that so now if i open back my terminal and let's clear this up and let's run this again so dot not run we can see it's running if i go back to postman if i change this to post and i attach a name here so i'm gonna name equal muhammad and click on send oops i chose the wrong one so let's come here let me remove these and let me put this back as get and now let's go to the dot .NET one which is on running on 5178 yes correct and let me update it here so I can put name equal Muhammad and change this to post click on send we can see I got my post request it says hello Muhammad perfect so now let's see how we can do this from within node it should be also pretty straightforward so again I need to utilize my web application app dot post and then what I do when I here I want to actually specify the endpoint so I'm going to say forward slash hello again and what I want to do is I want to specify my request and my response from here what I want to do is I want to actually get this request uh, process this request in order for me to take the incoming value but because node is bare bone I need to basically install a library in order for me to do that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my terminal and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to install another package which is going to put npm install something called body dash parser and this library basically will allow me to actually inspect the incoming request body and utilize it. So now this has been done, I can put here const body parser equal require body dash parser. Perfect. And now once I have done that, what I need to do is I need to actually enable my application to utilize this library. So I can do here as I can put app dot use body parser dot json. And now in this way, I was basically able to utilize this library inside my web application. And now this will allow me to actually utilize the body parser inside my post. So I'm going to define a variable. I'm going to put const name equal request dot body and then all I need to do I'm just gonna return a response dot json and it's gonna say hello and then I'm gonna attach the name as simple as that so the main differences between dot net and node here is I needed to rely on this library body parser in order for me to process the body of the request I needed to attach it and then I can utilize it here within the dot net side everything is actually being done for me because I'm utilizing the SDK part of the web application SDK I already have this in place so I don't really have to worry about it so now that I have this what I can do is I'll open my terminal again and I'm just gonna run my application so node app.js now it's running I can go back to postman and I'm gonna go back here I'm gonna change this to post I'm gonna add this to the body and then I'm gonna click on send so now we can see I got also hello Muhammad available for me so if we take a look at these two code let me let's stop them both we can see that these two are pretty similar like we have only three lines of code difference which is not really much, but basically we can see the structure of a .NET minimal API as well as Node.js application are pretty uh, pretty similar. We can see here the similarities of how we can create post and get and how easy it is to get started with both. 
I really feel if we already know that not, it's pretty much easy for you to get started with Node because they share the same structure and it will allow you to actually utilize a lot of your knowledge that you have there. So again, this has been a pretty easy example just in order for us to start exploring Node. But what I'm planning to do on the long run is also to create more videos of how we can actually integrate databases between these two and see the differences. And this is going to be one of the biggest differences of how .NET makes it very easy for us to utilize entity framework code or when it comes to Node, we have to create a row SQL in order for us to do this. So with that, this is going to be within an upcoming video. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comment down below. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.